2.4 write equations of lines. Parallel lines have a lot in common, but they never meet, ever. You might think that's sad, but every other pair of lines meets once and then drifts apart forever, which is pretty sad too. All right, let's write some equations of lines. To write the equation of a line, you can use either slope-intercept form, which was the y equals mx plus b, or you can use point-slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, where x1, y1 is one of your points, and m, of course, is your slope. So this is a point, and m is your slope. Write the equation of the line shown. All right, let's first use y equals mx plus b to do this. It's quite obvious here that our y-intercept is 1, 2, 3. So we have the point 0, negative 3. In other words, b is negative 3. And to find the slope, you want to pick two points that you're really sure about. This point right here is a fraction um, on the, this point right here, the y value would be a fraction. So it might not be a good one to pick. I wouldn't have an exact slope. But this point right here is very definitely the point 1, 2, 3, 1. So I can see that I now have two very definite points. I went up 1, 2, 3, 4. So my rise is 4. And I went over 1, 2, 3. My run is 3. So I know my slope is the rise over the run, or 4 thirds. So my equation would be y equals 4 thirds x minus 3. Now, if you want to use the other formula, what you would write is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We'd use the point that we found, which was 0, negative 3. And we only need the one point, and then we already know that the slope is 4 thirds. And using the other formula, we have y minus minus 3, which we can write y plus 3, equals 4 thirds x minus 0. And then solving that for y, we have y equals y plus 3 equals 4 thirds x. Bring the 3 on the other side, y equals 4 thirds x minus 3. Same exact answer, makes no difference which formula you use. And sometimes it's more obvious to use one method than the other. Um, for example, right here, write an equation of the line that passes 5, negative 1, and has a slope of negative 1 half. We don't have the y-intercept here, so it would be much more obvious to say, well, we have a point that is 5, negative 1, and we have a slope that is negative 1 half. So we have y minus a negative 1 equals the slope times x minus x1. Again, the x1, y1 is the point. So we have y plus 1 e equals negative 1 half x plus 5 halves. So subtract 1 from both sides. y equals negative 1 half x plus 5 halves minus 2 halves is 3 halves. And that is the equation of our line. Now we're going to write the equation of a line that passes through a point and is parallel to a certain line. So first we have to think about what we know about lines that are parallel to each other. We know that they have the same slope. So if it's parallel, that means that the slope must be negative 2. So now we have a point and a slope, so we can apply the point-slope formula and get our equation. y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1 
distribute that negative 2 plus 6, add 2 to both sides, and we get negative 2x plus 8. Part B. Now we have the same point we're passing through, but perpendicular to a certain line. So we have to think about what we know about lines that are perpendicular to one another. Negative and reciprocals. Right. So you take the negative and flip it. 2 over 1, flip it, and it would be 1 half. So same point, 3, 2. And now m equals 1 half y minus y1 equals slope times x minus x1. y minus 2 equals distribute that 1 half minus 3 halves. Add 2 to both sides and we get 1 half x plus 1 half. Write an equation of the line that passes through these two points. Well, now I have two points. I wanted either a slope and a point or a y-intercept and a point. So I can at least find a slope. The slope is going to be 15 minus 20 over negative 6 minus a minus 8. I have negative 5 over 2 is my slope, and I need a point. I can choose either point. Both of the points are going to be on my line, so it doesn't matter which of the points I choose. I'm going to just choose the first one. Point, negative 8, 20. And so y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. y minus 20 equals negative 5 halves x minus, that's 4 times 5 is 20, add 20 to both sides, I get y equals negative 5 halves x. If you don't believe me that using the other point would give you the same equation, then try it out. Our next problem says that in a chemistry experiment, you record the temperature of a compound to be negative 5 degrees Fahrenheit one minute after you begin the experiment. Six minutes after you begin, the temperature is 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Write a linear equation that models the temperature of the compound in relation to elapsed time. Before we even start, one good thing here is that all our units are the same. We have degrees Fahrenheit, degrees Fahrenheit, minutes, and minutes. So we don't have to worry about any units here, do we? Right. Okay, we always want to check that first. We have two things. We have the degrees Fahrenheit and we have the minutes. Which of them do you think is going to be the independent variable? Does the temperature depend on how many minutes have gone by or does the amount of minutes that have gone by depend on the temperature? Definitely the temperature depends on how many minutes have gone by. And in general, the time is always your independent variable because you can't manipulate that part. And so that means this would be the x-coordinate, this would be the y-coordinate. So what would our points be that we're dealing with here? Negative 5 degrees after 1 minute would be 1, negative 5. Because the independent is the x, okay? And the other point would then be 6, 20. All right, so we have two points. What do you think we should do now? Why not use the point-slope form? We need a slope first. Right, so let's calculate that. The slope is 20 minus a minus 5, 20 plus 5 over 6 minus 1, which is 25 over 5, or 5. Which point do you want to use? First one. All right, so we have a point, we have a slope, y minus y1 minus a minus 5 equals the slope times x minus x1. y plus 5 equals 5x minus 5. Subtract 5 from both sides and we get y equals 5x minus 10. And just as a check, why don't we make sure the 620 
fits into that equation. All right, so that means that y after 6 minutes should be equal to 20. So let's see if that works. Does 20 equal 5 times 6 minus 10? Well, that's 30 minus 10. Which is 20. Works. Yay. Another word problem. You have $2 to spend at the school bake sale. You decide to buy cupcakes and Rice Krispie treats. Write an equation that models this. We have $2 to spend total. Cupcakes are a dollar a piece, and the Rice Krispie treats are 25 cents a piece. If we have $1 times X cupcakes, so we have X cupcakes, let's say that we have Y of the Rice Krispie treats, $1 times X plus 25 cents times Y is 2. And I could just write this, I don't need the 1.00, I could just say x plus 0 0.25, y equals 2. What does the x-intercept and y-intercept represent? Well, let's think about it. What did the x-intercept mean? The x-intercept is when y is 0. So if y is 0, that means you're buying no Rice Krispie treats. So you're only buying cupcakes. So that will give you how many cupcakes you can buy if you decide only to buy cupcakes. So the x-intercept represents buying no Rice Krispie treats and only cupcakes. So that's how many you can buy with your $2. What does the y-intercept represent? The y-intercept would represent when x is zero now and you would only be buying Rice Krispie treats. What's the most Rice Krispie treats? So the treats maximum Rice Krispie treats. You can buy, noting that you get no cupcakes. And that's it for this lesson.